Today it's the Spark Cab, which potentially can be a complete game changer. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen, and it's good to have you along. The Spark Cab, what is it? Who is it for? An issue that it had and positive grid customer support, those are the things I'm going to be talking about today, plus how it sounds. Let's start with what it is. It's a full range flat response speaker cab, unlike a guitar cab, which colors the sound that it's that's fed into it. So you feed something into this and it just plays it the way it sounds. Uh, so you can play music through this. That's one thing you can do. But the more interesting thing that you can do with this is that you can make your practice amp gigable. So who wants to pay a ton of money to get a gigable amp? Well, no one. No one wants to part with hard-earned cash. And this might just be a solution to that. If you have a spark of some kind, or some kind of modeling thing, maybe on the floor, some pedal. Because you can connect those into this. Now, is it the only FRFR cab out there? No. But I had a look and it does seem to be on the cheaper side and has better connections. For instance, the Lion 6 power cab was 929 euros. This is 140 watts and we'll see how loud it gets. I have the dB meter over there behind me and I'll be trying it out with my Spark. And I'll also try it with my Quad Cortex. Now this costs 349 euros. Like I said, it's 140 watts. On the back side, you can connect your Spark whichever amp version you have of Spark uh, to the cab. You can also power your different Spark amps with the help of the cab, which is a really nice feature. And if I've understood correctly, you can hook this up to other cabs. So you get more, because more is more. It also has a contour switch and a ground lift. Yeah, I don't know. Before I get going with any of that, this one had a bit of an issue. I got it and I plugged it in and it said pretty much nothing. It did say something, but it was like, kind of like bzz, 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 just like that. Clearly your guitar, when I, when I played it, it was clearly my guitar, but there was something really off with it. And I emailed Positive Grid, contacted support and got an email back with a do-it-yourself hack on how to fix it. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So what you do, you take the cab, you put it on its face and open the back side of it like this. Then you lift off the back side of the cab with the help of the power cord, which you don't have connected to any sockets. And then inside you sh should see that little cable and you hook it up to that little thing there and you should hear a slight click and that's it and then you just attach the backside again and voila it works now that's a bit like um, if they have that do-it-yourself video ready for people they're sending out a bunch of cabs with that cable loose or they've had it happen enough times that they've actually made a video about it I find it weird, but I've heard really bad things about Positive Grid customer support and I've not had any trouble. I've had the Spark Amp, the Spark Mini I have here and the Spark Go, they've had no issues. This one did have the issue, but they really emailed me back pretty quickly and the fix worked. So, But I don't know, I can't speak to other people's experiences with them but I can't say anything bad. So maybe we'll see how it sounds and then I can say what I think because I've bought this so I can say whatever I think. Speaking of which, if you want to support this channel, which is funded by you good people, there are links in the description where you can help out. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it makes a bit of a humming sound. I think there might be a fan involved. Right now, I have it set about halfway. Oh, and by the way, I saw a video where the guy who's... How to set up your Spark, whichever, he had a Mini. How to set up your Mini together with the cab. And he said, put the Mini in mono mode. Which, no. 
don't do that. I tried that and it works, but it also works in stereo mode and it's actually louder in stereo mode. Besides the cable, that mini plug kind of thing, which comes with the cab, it's stereo. So why would you use mono? I don't know. Oh yeah, and one more thing before I get going. I have, I think I said I have it about halfway, but I also have the microphone like maybe a yard from the cab to pick up a bit more uh, because it's not a guitar cab, so I didn't want to close mic it. Yeah, so you get more of the room. Now I don't know if you can hear it, but it makes a weird kind of uh, hissing sound at the beginning of a note uh, when you play some uh, a phrase for the first time. And there it went dead. I wonder if it's the cab or the amp, we'll check out with the quad cortex later, because when you do uh, this, when you turn on some kind of overdriven sound... You don't notice it. By the way, I have the Spark Mini set at full volume and let's turn up the volume a bit. About three quarters now. Turn it up all the way, let's see how loud it gets.
Okay, so there's something with the volume between this and this. Uh, might be something in the app where you could get it louder. I mean, you could get it loud enough, I think, for gigging. But uh, 140 watts should have been louder, I thought, than this was. But, yeah, th that's as maybe. Okay, so here's a clean sound that I have in the Quad Cortex. Let's see if it makes that hissing thing. No, it doesn't. So, is this a game changer? Well... <sighs> Hard to say it is. I don't think it is a game changer. Do I think it's good? Yes, I do. If you're planning to gig, if you have a Spark Mini, for instance, and you want to go gigging, paying 350 euros for this can be a way more affordable alternative than to get something bigger, because this sounds quite nice as well. The thing is, there is a bit of hiss going on, um, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but if you're going to gig with it, well, any club, pub, whatever, where you're going to play is noisy enough that no one will notice if this hisses a bit. One more thing I'm going to try is I'm going to close mic it with the, well, I have the quad cortex hooked up now, so I'll close mic it with that and see. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what that sounds like. I have to listen back to what that sounds like before I can give you a definite verdict. So this might change, but I think this is very good. Uh, close miking when gigging is probably something you have to do anyway. At least with if you're using a spark of some kind. And if you're using a spark and you're only using one sound, that'll be easy enough. Otherwise, you'll need the Spark controller to switch sounds and stuff like solo volumes. Well, you can program those into different sounds, I suppose. It does sound very good. Like it sounds like the Spark, just bigger. But it's not the game. It's not the game changer I thought it might be. I'm a bit torn, actually. I know I'm not keeping this. Let's let's just say it like that. I'm not keeping this. Not for me. I have other options available. It looks nice, the connectivity is nice, it's easy to use, it's fairly affordable and it's uh, you can use it nicely with one of the sparks. That's about it. If you want to check out my video on the top practice amps that I've ever tried, it's here. If you want to check out my lesson channel, that's there. Other than that, I hope you consider supporting the channel via one of the links in the description because I buy the gear that I review so you get an honest review. But above all, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you had some use of it and I hope you have a nice day. Take care. Bye.